extremely. Now, if I give you the example, by six billion people. The, in 2018, my colleagues at the University of London calculated the, num the amount of live streaming, energy used for live streaming by 5.2 billion people, and it was found to be equivalent to the amount of energy consumed by five African countries. Just think of this again. The energy we use worldwide by 5.2 billion people to watch this Basito in 2018 is equivalent to the energy consumed across five African countries. So you can see the scale of this uh, business. In order to benefit from this amount of revenues from the live streaming, for example, you need to have a very strong internet in the country. And therefore, I think one clear message from your conference today is for the government of Nigeria to invest and invest and invest in internet. We call it generally information and communication technologies, but I make it as simple as possible. Internet, so you listen to the government because internet is a government thing. Internet, internet, internet. That's number one. Number two, you need to look at the legal aspects, the regulations, how this company will work, how they're going to have the copyright materials, how this talent, because videos and this entertainment is all about talents. How are you going to get these talents? You want to make sure they are encouraged to bring out their talent and they know they will be secure. There are laws and regulations. You also need to look to the business models. Well, the regulation also is important, but the business model is not about uh, just having a camera and having a studio. That's not a business model. You need to look to the business model where you need to educate and help startups and use it you can them about the global reach. If you're producing a video or any entertainment material in Nigeria, you have to consider the global audience. And number four, which I think is very important, you need to also appreciate the issues of international competitiveness. Now, the Indian movies, which is number one in the world, as I said, and you are number two in terms of the videos you produce, how much or these 2,500 videos have managed to make it to international screens. And number five, which I'm going to spend time on this, is the content and context. All these entertainment uh, products, the key issue in order for them to be successful and to produce income is the context and the content. And let me talk about the content. In the content side, people are found to be watching more than reading. Since the last eight or maybe 10 years, particularly the last three to five years, we are becoming a watching nation or a watching citizen. People watch videos rather than reading an article. So that's number one, which means you have to focus on any people who can watch, which means videos. So this is where you need to understand the content has to be something people can would love to watch it because people are no longer reading much. That's number one. Number two, the implications of people watching a video, that means it has to be short, it has to be snappy, it has to be attractive, it has to be colorful, it has to be delivering the message quickly, it has to be global, it has, it has, it has. So it's not about the technical aspects just alone, but it's also about what we call it, the story behind any video you will make. The story is important. And in order to have it, to deliver a good content material and to deliver a good story, you need to ask yourself, what is the message I am going to deliver from this video? And number two, who is this video for? Is it for Nigerians? Is it for international audience? Is it for young, for all, for whom? The more you can make your message is unified, is global, is generic, the more you can actually get more reach. And that's what this Basito did. The, why six billion people watch this Basito? Because people said, number one, the music is a mix of global 
if you like uh, music scenes. It's not just African, it's not Puerto Rican, it's not European. That's number one. The mix of this music, how they made it, made the video, uh, li if you like, watchable, listenable, likable by anyone, whether he's from Africa, from India, from Saudi Arabia. So, for example, in Saudi Arabia, it's been watched by more than 20 million times. So, this can give you an idea. Despite in Saudi Arabia at that time, you can't watch videos like this in local official telling, but despite that, 2 billion people watch it. 2 million people, for example, 20 billion million people, and so on. Number two, this video gave us a lesson. It's not just about the language, English, it's about anything else. Because uh, the language used in the video is not English. It's more of a Spanish language. Despite that, this video made it to number one in the United States, which is an English-speaking country. So the content, the language you use is quite important. Then how you display it, and so on and so forth. So I will repeat quickly, entertainment is a global industry, is expected here by December to produce 2.1 trillion to the whole globe. One of the example of a fast growing country in the developing countries we use as an example in our reports is Nigeria. So you Nigerian have been doing very well. Nigeria is being ranked number two worldwide in the number of videos produced, 2,500 according to the report. But from my experience with Africa, and I would imagine you agree with me, Nigeria would have actually produced more than 2,500 because in Africa, normally the statistics are underestimated because we don't have a good reporting system. So I'm expecting Nigeria would have produced more than 2,500 videos last year or 2017. What's important is you need to understand the five steps or the strategy for entertainment industry. This will include marketing experts, will include people who knows digital, include people who understand the law, regulations, include people who understand the global dimension of this industry, and is being estimated by the International Monetary Fund and maybe consultants like Bryce Water Cooper that could easily be uh, a contribution of 8.1, I think, percent to the GDP of Nigeria if this industry can well regulate it. Now, to finalize my talk, and I'm happy to take question, is that uh, Nigeria uh, is a very large country. I think it's the largest in terms of population in uh, in in Africa, and you need to benefit from this diversity because Nigeria is huge. You have a huge population. Why not you try to have a national, if you like, entertainment strategy where you bring all this diversity. Diversity is beautiful. Bring all factions, all cultures, all people background, ethnicities, uh, religion, and come um, and create a follow up of this conference. Something called it entertainment, national entertainment strategy. And talk young and old, poor and rich, and then you can actually decide on how you can really lift Nigeria GDP by using the talents in Nigeria. And I think I might stop here to allow some intervention if you like. Okay. okay. I am happy if there is any question before I can, if you want me to continue for another few minutes. Mike. Mike. Just one question. Okay. My name is King Sima Akwa. My name is King Sima Akwa. Hello, sir. Right on, right on. Um, you've mentioned a lot of things, uh, which includes uh, the role of government in um, sporting startups, especially in Nigeria. You've also mentioned the business models and all of that. And for most startups in Nigeria, I'll use my city, I'll use Uyo as an example. We do our own work, especially uh, 
brand management um, startup. We do our own work a lot. We know what is involved. We know we fast internet and all that. But over the years, one of the things you've mentioned is waiting what government should do. This has government. What are the measures? What are? Can those on the on the on the Skype maybe tie for me quickly so I can read? What are the major? What sorry? What are what is the what is the what are the major? What are the major? Regardless of government, let's just assume government do anything, which has been so many decades. What are the measures which are being put in place by um, individuals and organizations like yourself who are hierarchies and startups to encourage startup industry? The entertainment industry as a whole, let's use entertainment as a whole. Let's the entertainment industry and entertainment startup in Nigeria, regardless of the development input. Very good question. And let me answer this question. Uh, let me answer it by starting by how significant the role of government, even technology transfer when the initiative, came, the, this uh, I, theory came, there is a critical role for government because this is our government. The internet is a government. You cannot do it as a startup or a company or uh, uh, anyone. It's a government. And the good example we give worldwide is the iPhone. You know, Apple is the leading company now making trillions of, 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 of dollars from their uh, iPhone. But in fact, Apple is not genius in terms of what they are producing at the device, but they are benefiting from the internet. If you look, I'm, I'm, I'm sure in this room now you are watching me, most of you, I don't know how many, but most of you are using iPhone or Apple products. If you ask yourself without internet, this Apple project or Apple product or iPhone mean nothing. This smartphone is simply nothing without an internet. So that can tell you about how important, if you look to the serine, you know, the location, the GIA, the, 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 the ma being everything in the iPhone, it's been invested by the government. The serine, you know, in the, in the iPhone or in the Apple products, this is being produced by research and development paid for by the government. So the government paid for research and development to create to create this serum where you can find things, find my iPhone. Find my iPhone is a technology invest uh, produced by government, not by iPhone. iPhone is just benefiting from the investment made by government. So that's number one. So you need to, number one, precise and clarify to Nigerian government and I hope if Nigeria got an ICT ministry, you tell them that why you may not see the benefit of investing hugely in internet products and services. This all, uh, not like me now, I will not have been able to talk to you unless the Nigerian government invested in internet in Nigeria, for example. Now, they will ask you, okay, what is next? You say to them, next. We want you to make the environment in the country, like here in the UK, more enabling and more productive for the use. What does that mean? More innovation hub, more uh, use uh, platform, more exemption from taxes, more startup fund. Go to the companies, social responsibilities. Let's give this to the youngest. And I said in Africa, why not to create in each city, Find a university in any city, say in Abuja or in whatever it is, any city, and uh, uh, make a, a partnership with a major university in that city and, and build, I call it a creative lab. Creative lab. This idea, for example, was executed in United Arab Emirates and produced excellent videos. Excellent videos came out of UAE from something called Creative Lab. What do you do in this Creative Lab? You just bring a big room, uh, have them bent it with the color we normally recognize, have the, the layout more innovative, more uh, in, in, in enhancing and stimulating people to talk to each other, bring out uh, talents and ideas, uh, give them lots of uh, good computers, 
uh, good internet. One of Africa's major problem, also including Nigeria, is electricity. So make sure you can have generation. So this place will work 24 hours. And why I'm insisting on 24 hours? Because you don't know at the time Alam is very productive. We don't know when Alam mind is going to be very creative and innovative. Maybe some people, they like to wake in the morning. Some people are productive in the middle of the night. So you want to give them 24 <laughs> access and stimulating and productive uh, environment. So that can easily be solved in Africa by having 24 hour generators. Make the regulations, make the universities invest on this use startups. Try to link this with the national strategy of the economy. And while I'm talking to you, I just found now, I didn't look at this, I didn't mention this earlier. It is, be, it is expected by Bryce reports that Nigeria will have a 12.1%, this is another report, collective aggregate contribution uh, to the GDP as, uh, in, in, uh, in the next five years. So by 2022-23, some people estimate that this industry will bring 12.1% collectively which means to the whole go to the whole nation videos culture music whatever it is and they are also labeling nigeria as the world's fastest growing entertainment and music and media market for example so there's a growing market being identified outside but for young talented startups you need to deal with them with the strategy you need to include people from the social development People from high education, higher education, ICT, uh, companies, public private partnership, and so on and so forth. Because you need to help to make the environment stimulating. In the UK, for example, the use of fund we have our youngest so they can actually start up their own projects. Give them exemption. The government regulation gives you the first one year free, no, no tax. And you in the second year, third year. You will only pay tax if you reach a particular threshold. Internet is available. They can have lots of discount or renting places. Universities are being encouraged to have like innovation hub and so on and so on. So this is a government-led initiative with the citizen. But I will always say it has to be led by the thinking the needs of the US. The US the startup in Nigeria needs have generic requirement and they have Nigerian customized needs. So that's where people, they need to look at. Also to consider issues like gender, like issues like to do with disabilities and so on. Because for example, one of the reasons why the Millennium Development Goals did not succeed because they did not encount, encounter or count the number of those who are disabled in each country. So when you're putting a factor or a figure for the target, you need to understand this target is not just for non-disabled people, it's for everyone. Everyone means you have to count and have a special arrangement for those with disabilities, with any issues like this. Any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Alan Ahmed. Alan, listen to all that you have said and watch your life here. I want to find out what can be the possible solution to network interactions that we can provide to the problems of internet uh, communication and uh, issue of uh, electricity and uh, broadband in internet communication. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I, I, I understood the question correctly, but uh, are you asking about uh, how do people deal with issues to do with connectivity, internet, and so on? Yes. Okay, okay. Now, from the, the Nigerian, uh, I can't remember his name, uh, uh, the Secretary General of the uh, African Universities Union. Long time ago, I can't remember, 10 years ago or seven or eight, 10 years ago, he's Nigerian, he's a professor, he's a well-distinguished uh, scholar. He used to be the Secretary General of the African Universities Union. 
So he said on a statement in a British Canadian uh, Africa summit, he said the broadband used by an average African university is 50% less than the broadband used by an individual in his house in the OCDs countries. What does that mean? The internet or the broadband I am enjoying now in my house in London is two times faster and better and stronger than the broadband a university in Nigeria is using. So you can see my house, my broadband is double the speed and the strength you have in an average African university. That's number one. Number two, you pay double the cost I am paying. So individuals here, Internet is very cheap here in Europe and OCDs. Now, to answer your question, this is a major problem. The bandwidth for all uh, in all African countries is very low. So what we need to do, we need to make our case with the political leaders. The political leaders, every time there is a political rally, political discussion, and, and not just the government, you need to tell them they must must, must invest in internet and the broadband and all these kind of issues because there is no progress in any economy. There is no progress in any economy today without internet. There is no progress. This is not my saying. This is all people. World Bank, IMF, International Monetary Fund, United Nations, and so on and so forth. No progress in any economy without strong internet therefore you should always make this case and if they ask you okay how much investment you say to them we need as much investment there is no limit because in the uk we are still investing in broadband we still have people in the united kingdom in remote villages we have people in remote villages they still don't have broadband strong enough but the ict companies or the mobile companies or the telecommunication companies, they cannot afford financially to provide them with the fastest beat broadband because there is very little number of them. So they will say the argument to the government, we cannot provide the ABC village in UK with fastest internet because it's very expensive because there is no many people. In your case in Nigeria, you need to have very good marketing and strategy people to work out the figures and say to them we are a big populated country we are 150 million or 70 i'm not sure and you will make the case you have millions of people who will use this surface and it should be using lots of money and therefore it's a profitable business for the government to invest and you should also make a case with the uh, with the with lots of ministries not just the ict but the prime minister office, uh, your minister for development, education, this is even I made, a, I made a call before in Sudan, for example. I said any universities in Sudan does not spend money on having a reasonably effective uh, broadband in all campuses of the university should not be given a license to operate. Because you cannot be charging students like Sudan four, five, six thousand dollars to study, and you don't provide them with internet. You have to invest on the internet. So this needs regulation, but also it needs a political, technological campaign, investment. Tell them this is the money here. Give them examples. Make case for them. What we call it, make the case for investment in AI and ICT. But I agree with you, broadband in Africa in general, including Nigeria, is very poor. And if you don't fight for it within your political leaders, you will not get it. Because this is a government initiative. Thank you. Um, my question, you talked about globalization and one of the reasons I came for this conference, I'm, I'm a teaching English rapper. 
And I've, I've been thinking about globalization very, very much too. Uh, my question is, are there platforms where, or are there possibilities for business opportunities in the sense of uh, bringing record videos outside Nigeria to consider uh, an essence talents here and probably because if we talk about entertainment as a product, one thing I've learned is that if you take a product from where it's available plenty and then take it to somewhere else, not so available, the value increases. So are there platforms where organizations outside Nigeria can actually come here to handle some talents to maybe make something of it and then uh, leveraging on globalization and also internet? Now, as you can appreciate, I'm, I'm not listening very clear claims uh, message from the chat just now. Now, but I will try to answer based on, I think I understood a, a little bit of the question. Now, in terms of globalization, the first thing I hope I can deliver or I can concrete here is that many people now worldwide, and I would assume also in Nigeria, they think we are in the information era. We are not in the information era. We are in a globalization era. What does that mean? People went through information revolution long time ago. Worldwide, in the United Kingdom, we are not talking about digital revolution or information revolution now. We are actually challenged by globalization. And the example is Brexit. I'm sure you follow what is going on here in our country. Brexit, where we want to get away from the European Union. This is a globalization issue. This can tell you how important about consideration of globalization. We are talking about globalization issues now. For Nigeria to benefit from globalization, number one, you have many millions, I think, not thousands, probably million, I'm not sure, of Nigerians. I know, I'm a very close friend of Nigerians. One of the people who founded this organization with me are two Nigerians. The first one who died is called Konrim Osia. He's Nigerian. He was a professor at Maryland University. And one of our key founders is Professor Sonny Nawankwa. He's also a Nigerian, one of the distinguished professors of marketing. He's now in Nigeria as the provost of the Nigerian Military Academy. So I know lots of Nigerians worldwide in America, in UK, and so on. So you can attract the Nigerians diaspora. And I have, I'm also aware from our projects on the international diaspora project, Nigeria had done lots of work on bringing Nigerians' investment from its own people. So if I am a Nigerian, try to stimulate me to invest in startups and so on. Because if I come to invest in Nigeria as a Nigerian, because I come and see my families and so on, I will bring with me the global drivers. So imagine Sonny Nawankwa, your professor there, he wants to invest. He will say, Alam, you know ICT, you know entertainment industry. Can you give me tips of how to start this in Nigeria? So he will bring a global knowledge to the Nigeria. Number two, most big companies like Microsoft, Apple, all of them, they produce technology outside their countries. India, for example, is one of the major hub for the production of ICT project products relating to publishing. Most of the publishing is now done in India. Oxford University Press, uh, Thomson Reuters, all these people, we produce our products in, in India. Very cheap, we send it by email, it comes back, type set it, design, and so on. So to come to Nigeria, you can attract more big companies, they want to do video uh, production, for example, to come to Nigeria. If you make studios, well established, there is no internet, because what is the challenge in Africa? Uh, war and conflict, this is easy now. People, they know now, Africa, you can do business. It's not as they used to understand in the past. We are a conflict zone. No, we still have wars and conflict, but we are surviving as nations, number one. Number two, electricity is a critical killer in Africa for investment. Make sure you tell investors you have generators 24 hours. Number three, good internet. Four, good legal framework. I am protected, bank transfer, and so on and so forth. Five, make sure the government is also promoting Nigeria in a very positive way. 
come to Nigeria. This is what UAE is doing. UAE is attracting people to Dubai by producing good marketing and tourism. And, and I have met many Nigerians in Dubai coming for holiday. Why not you attract people to Nigeria the same like Kenyans and so on? So in terms of industry, you need to show them that. And more importantly, try to show that Nigeria got plenty of young talent with good ICT backgrounds and video in motion, uh, motion, uh, motion production, uh, digital production. They are available. So you say to them, if you come to Nigeria, the running of your studio will cost you maybe $100. It costs you $1,000 in the UK. I have good people here who can work for you much cheaper than and then uh, in UK and so on and so forth. And just to finish my question, my answer here, many people, they don't understand the real facts behind China leading the world in terms of productivity, in terms of, of, of investment. China is producing massively and flooding all the world. And I assume Nigeria is also flooded by, now, by Chinese products because of two things. Not just because of the labor cost is cheap in China, no, but because of science and technology. China's government, the Chinese government invests massively on science and technology. And I remember a colleague of mine, the director of the National Research Council of, of Italy, he came to us in the UK one time and he told us, he said, if you go to MIT in America, you find that you, it looks like you are in Chinatown in London. And we said, what do you mean? He said, it's full of Chinese. So you need to convince the whole world you have good talents, you have good science and technology in Nigeria, which I am confident you have. And therefore, for investors, particularly SMEs, small and medium enterprise companies working in entertainment industry, the best place for, Niger for them is Nigeria. And you have another advantage, which I can see Nigerians are not taking it aggressively as I expected. You have the language, you speak fluent English. You are a very good English speaking country in addition to your other dialogues. This is a big advantage for the entertainment industry. You need to capitalize on this as well. Thank you for a great food. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm very grateful. I'm so happy to see you again. Um, I think that was a very wonderful section with you, Prof. And I'm very grateful for the time we've shared together today. My pleasure. And I'm really wishing you and uh, I don't want to say this in front of you, but I know you are a very active, very smart guy, and I cancel everything because of you, uh, Iku, because I know you are always excelling in what you do. All the best. I wish you all the best. Thank you, Prof. I'm honored. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you, Prof. Yes. So we'll, we'll talk again some more. Yes. Very good. All the best. Have a nice day. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.